uh, feeling is mutual too. Um, wow, uh, I'm probably going to get a little emotional. Of course, um, this is a big deal to me. Um, as I've said to the players, being a hockey player at the University of Wisconsin was all I wanted to be. I was fortunate. And by the way, my dad is up in the corner taking my picture up there. Connie Andringa will give you a big wave. Um, our lives changed when my dad moved us to 5109 Flat Avenue. Why is that number or street kind of uh, significant to us? Well, we were five, down, uh, five doors down from Badger Bob. My dad and him quick became friends. I think my dad's first uh, college hockey game was Michigan Tech, right? You drove up to Michigan Tech to watch one game and drive back. How miserable is that? Holy oh, yuck. Uh, anyway, um, from that day on, the Badger hockey uh, program became a part of life for me. Uh, it, was, it, it engulfed our family. Uh, my dad quickly jumped on the bad wagon of Badger Bob, and uh, that was back in the day when you could have Badger buddies. They were, you would take in a bunch of players and uh, treat them as your own and, and bring them over for dinners on the weekends. So, you know, for me, a weekend consisted of going to Badger hockey games Friday, Saturday night and having the players come over for Sloppy Joes on Sunday and play knee hockey with players like yourself. So from an early age, I was, I was enthralled by Badger hockey. That was my NHL. Um, people to this day ask me, you know, did you have a pro career? And at first, you know, you kind of, well, no, I, I quickly retired. Well, no, I just wasn't good enough to play in the NHL um, or the, in the pros. And yet, when I look back on it, I never really cared to play in the pros. My NHL was right here wearing that cardinal and white sweater. And every day as a kid, I'd be out in the driveway, I'd be in my basement. Uh, I was also fortunate we had a rink about five, six doors down. Uh, I got to be on the same ice with Mark Johnson as a you know five, six-year-old uh, and play pond hockey with probably the best U.S. player of all time. So um, being a Badger hockey player was all I wanted to be. Um, kind of taking a step back here, when I'm Tony and Mark Wosicki asked me to uh, speak in front of you tonight as an alumni reflection, as you call it, uh, honestly, so many things started coming into my mind about what this program and what really this moment has meant uh, or this moment tonight means to me. And uh, what we're really talking about is the relationships of the people. Uh, I can't really tell you what happened during games. I have video. And by the way, Adam, I do have my highlight tape for you that I know you're really going to like. It's 60 minutes long, so you're, you're really going to like it. Um, but as I think people have said, it's the relationships. Um, for some of you that maybe don't know, I have st st stage four colon cancer. And it was gut-wrenching. It was the worst day of my life. Uh, December 15th will go down in my world as D-Day, a day that I got smacked around. And it was an opportunity to decide, what are you going to do? Um, and from that moment on, as soon as that doctor told me the news, it was a quick decision. It was an easy decision because of what I learned as a Badger hockey player. Uh, the relationships and the teammates and the coaches that I had here, they instilled in me the work ethic, the fortitude, uh, the inspiration to want to be the best person I could possibly be. Uh, my wife uh, was the ringleader. Uh, she came into my hospital bed and we teared up for about maybe 10 minutes. And yet, the best thing she said to me was, we got this. And that's kind of how to live in this dream right now, which is, I'm going to survive. I'm going to be good. But what I learned here as a Badger hockey player really gave me the strength to overcome this. A lot of you came here for different reasons, whether it was just school and academics, plus hockey, whether it was hockey. Um, I know some people like Adam came to learn to read and write. Uh, Tony came here to do math. Uh, so uh, a lot of people come for different reasons. And um, I came here because I saw my brother go through it. 
uh, give you a little family history. I won a national championship, and I felt like I'm king of the world, right? My brother played in three finals and won two. So he's got a little bragging rights on me. Um, but I knew from watching him, being in the locker room as a stick boy, that this is what I wanted to do. And as a player, we had the great coach in Jeff Sauer. Uh, Tony knows, having played for him, uh, one of the greatest influences in our lives. Uh, he gave us a long leash. Is that safe to say? Real long leash. Um, I can tell you one of my favorite stories is uh, going to Colorado College. It was one of the best weekends of the year because we normally beat CC pretty regularly. It was also the best party spot on the road. And we always had great relationships with the CC players and so it'd be kind of like Late in the third period, the game's pretty much almost won, and you're like lining up. Hey, you guys gonna pick us up? Yeah, we'll uh, make sure you're ready at the ho uh, hotel by about 10:45. Okay, where are we going? We'll, fi we'll figure that out. All right, quick jab here, quick jab there, and away we go. Um, but we lost a Saturday night game. We won Friday, lost Saturday, and we played Tuesday night back in Madison. And I remember kind of feeling down for about 10 minutes. But I quickly rebounded, mainly because I knew where I was going to go. I was going to get picked up. A bunch of us were. We're going to have some fun. Coach Sauer, in the four years that I was at Wisconsin, never had curfew. Think of that, fellas. No bed checks, no curfew. You had to kind of police yourself, and you are pretty good at it for the most part. Um, but that night changed because he came on the bus and said, all right, fellas, you got a game Tuesday, bed checks at 1.00. And the bus went silent. We sat there, we thought about it. And I know Sneds and Parksy up there, you remember it well. We quickly had a team meeting in the back of the bus and got our captain, Steve Rollick, to run up to the front of the bus and tell Coach Sauer that we had to veto the curfew. We saw Steve Rollick walk up to the front, kind of give Coach that, you know, players want to go out, we have some fun, we'll be ready, don't worry, Coach Tuesday, we got gotcha. you. Coach kind of nods and stands up and goes, all right, just make sure you're on the bus, 6 a.m. All right, perfect, problem solved. Um, but he gave us that, that feeling that it's not just about, you know, putting you in a, in a box and trying to do everything for you. He let us become who we are as people. And I think that's one of the important things about the experience you're going through here. It's not just about hockey, it's about the experience, right? going to class, being with other students, mingling, going out to the KK, which I only went to once in four years. Um, it was a long one, though. But, um, but Coach Sauer let us be students. He let us be people. He let us learn from each other. Uh, we made a ton of mistakes. I, I remember one practice. Uh, Sean Hill was my defense partner during that practice. and. It's kind of getting boring, you know, same practice. It's like, okay, it's the middle of January, blah, blah, blah. And Sean said, who was probably the funniest guy I've ever played with, said, you know what, let's play keep away from everyone. So it was a drill where we would dump it in. We're supposed to break out with the forwards, do a regroup drill, break it back out. And Sean said, let's play keep away. I'm like, I'm in, sure. So puck goes in my corner, I pass it to Sean. He skates a little forward, dumps it back to me. I skate forward, dump it back to him. And a forge are like, what the hell's going on here? Whistle blows, Coach Sauer, what the hell's going on, Sean Hill, Robin, Drinka? Well, we took a little, you know, tongue lashing, we looked at each other, winked, and said, let's do it again. So first, same thing happens. Now this time, we, we pass it back and forth. And I think the forwards knew a little bit of what was going on, but Coach Sauer got a little heated. Blew the whistle, yelled at us, then threw, he threw his stick at me, which I thought was a little odd, you know? Uh, well, my decision probably wasn't the best, but I decided to take his stick and throw it into the stands. And so I did, and he quickly blew the whistle and said, okay, now go get it. So I started to skate off to the door, and he said, uh-uh, you gotta find a way to get there from the ice in the old Coliseum. So, Went in the penalty box, took my skates off, climbed over, ran up to the uh, stairs, found the stick, and instead of bringing it with me, I threw it back on the ice. He didn't like that either. Um, but after that, it was over. And he let us be 
young kids again making mistakes. Um, and to this day, uh, I, I thank Jeff Sauer from the bottom of my heart because he was my coach. He gave me everything here at the university, and I'll be forever grateful uh, to him. Uh, with that, you know, we're kind of trying to close this up here. You know, what did I really learn as a student athlete here? First off, I learned how to meet things head on. Whether you're a first liner, a fourth liner, hoping to make the roster, the lineup that night, you get a lot of curveballs thrown at you. It's how you react to those curveballs is really what's going to determine your success. If you want to bitch and complain about the coach, about this or that, or your teammates, you ain't going to go far in life. You hit it head on, you learn how to deal with it, you talk to people, you be up front with them, you're going to go a lot farther in life if you do it that way. Um, again, I got sad one night. Um, I, was, I played horrible the night before, Jeff sat me, and uh, I, again, I was pissed at him. And it was wrong. I should have been pissed at myself. I learned quickly that if, you know, what can I control? I can control how I react and what I can do about it. And from that point on, I never missed another game. And um, one of the great things that I take back is I played in 180 some games, uh, most in the program history. And a lot of that is due to Jeff Sauer. Um, but hitting head things on was something that I learned quickly. The other thing I'd say is live in the moment. I didn't have NHL spread across the TV 24-7. I had Badger hockey on WHA on Friday, Saturday. Who remembers that? Friday, so you get home quickly, right? Yep. That to me was, was everything, watching those games. Um, so the NHL was not a big draw. I didn't care about it. I wanted to wear this ring. I wanted to be a Badger. So I never wasted or concerned myself with how fast can I get out of here. The NHL will wait. The NHL can wait. Pro hockey can wait. This is the greatest time you'll ever experience in your life. Bar none. And I can say that and I can know he can say that. My two former teammates up there, Gary Bunn's up there. This is the best time in your life with the friends that you will have for life. Don't, don't wish it away. Really think hard about if you want to ride a bus to the minors. Everyone wants to play in the NHL, I get it. That is the goal for some. But don't waste your time here. Consider what you have here, the facilities, the school, the, the education. You're going to go far in life if you slow down, take a step back, and think what's important about your future. Uh, I, I know this, if somebody said, what? I'm going to take you back in any period of your life. Where do you want to go? I want to sit right there again. Uh, Mrs. Wagner, you said four years went so fast, right? Where are the freshmen? Raise your hands. Okay. Right now, remember this day. Because hopefully you'll be here in a four years from now, and you're going to see the exact same thing. I can't believe where it went. It blinked. And away you go. So don't wish your time away here. And the last thing I'm going to say, as Pozik knows, on those cold weekends in Anchorage, Alaska, where he would pull me to the bar. <laughs> hey, okay, maybe I went with him, you know. Um, have fun. Have fun. Coach Sauer, let us have fun. I know the people around here, the coaches that I know. Now, Ozzy, I know he could be a hard ass, right? <laughs> But I can tell you, you follow me, I'll go in the back, I got a bunch of Osiki stories for you. Uh, I had the good fortune of rooming with him for two years at home and on the road one year, so I know all his weaknesses, okay? So, I got him. Uh, but have fun, we had it right there, Dennis Stedden, another roommate of mine for two years on the road, two years at home. Uh, every Monday night was wrestling night in our apartment. Uh, not much studying done on Monday nights, but it was wrestling nights. So we bring all the beds down, put them on the floor, and then throw it on your wrestling uniform, whatever it was, uh, and go at it. Um, we had some fun parties. Um, I know my dad probably doesn't want me to tell this, but we had a really nice furnished apartment. Uh, when we left after two years, we didn't have a furnished apartment. 
all that somehow got tossed out the, the window, the door. Um, that was the unfortunate part. There was no security deposit left. And I think, if I remember right, uh, Dad, I think he had to pay a little extra money uh, for some of those. Uh, I'm not saying throw things out the window. Don't, don't get me wrong. I didn't throw them either, by the way. I was Osiki, so. Um, but having fun is why you're a Badger. That's what you want to do. You want to win championships and rub in all the faces of those Minnesota dweebs, right? There's no, one of the great things about moving from Madison to the state of Minnesota is I get to wear my red and white every single day and stick it right up their rear. I love doing it. Yeah, exactly. But you gotta have fun. The demands on you, the, you know, this day and age compared to 20, 30, geez, 30 years ago, my lord, um, is what is important. You gotta have fun at what you do. Uh, for every day that I can remember as a, stu as a student athlete here, I had a ton of fun. And that's what I'm gonna recommend to you guys. Lastly, I do wanna say uh, three things. To Brian Pozick, uh, I've done, I did radio television for 20 years, the best of the business right there. No doubt about it, the best of the business. We did jump in some bushes, and I don't know why, so don't ask, it was stupid. Um, but we had a lot of fun on the road, and, and uh, I do hope if you ever need uh, me again, I'm, I'll raise my hand. Um, I've met and been around a lot of great Badgers. Um, there's two here tonight that mean a lot to me. Uh, one is Adam Burrish. I hated this kid when I coached against him. I was at Memorial, he was at Edgewood. He was good, he was cocky, and he won. But what I've gotten to know about him, he is the ultimate teammate, the ultimate person you want to share your life with, you want to get to know. He's loyal, he's professional in every way uh, that he does his, uh, goes about his business. And as a person watching from afar, I would love to play with Adam Burrish, and I never had that opportunity, but I would be first in line to sign up to play with that guy. You've been a great friend. I want to thank you for everything. One of the fun things, knowing the TV and how you do things is, I get to watch uh, him on the air while he's in the Chicago studios, and if you ever notice, Adam's got his phone right by him right away, and he, sometimes he says, just text me if you want me to say a word or do something. I'll do it while he's on the air. I'm like, sure. So my son Jack and I are at home one night, and Adam's on there, and I'm like, hey, Burr, what, you know, say this word or say that, and sure enough, bing, he puts it in there, and it has no meaning whatsoever. But yet, I'm loving it. The best one is he's on the air, and I said, Burr, give me jazz hands. And sure enough, comes on the air, and he starts talking, and all of a sudden, he just starts raising the hands. Awesome. And the last person I want to recognize is, is Tony Granato. Um, I was a stick boy in 83, and you came on board as a freshman. I've never seen a pissed off 18, 19 year old turn this program like he did. Um, we've had great players, but never what he was able to do with his size and his passion for playing the game. The great thing that he taught me was how to get two minutes stick, uh, spearing, two minutes cross-checking, and two minutes slashing all in the same player. And I thank you for that. That was special. Um, but I watched him as a 14-year-old, as a stick boy. I got to see him in the locker room. He treated everyone with respect. He made this his, like, this is what I want to do. Uh, and. To this day, the reason why I chose the number 21 was because of Tony. I wanted to follow in his footsteps. I wanted to be that person that everyone looked at as the captain, the person that represents their school and their university in this way. And the fact that he's running our program now means a tremendous amount to me, but I love you to death. I want to thank you for all the things you've done for me and my family, and I know we're going to win the national championship under your, under your watch, so thank you very much.
I've talked way too much, but I want to thank all of you. Uh, I know what it's like to be there, and I was a father of a 20 and 18 and 16. I know what it's like to be a parent at some of these events. And, um, I know the special feeling that you have right now, so I want to thank you all for coming, and uh, have a great evening. for coming out tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. We plan to do this again next year, bigger and better. So thanks again. Drive on.